chest pain chest pain is a common symptom in patients presenting to hospital the differential diagnosis is wide and a detailed history and through clinical examination are paramount to ensure that the subsequent investigative pathway is appropriate here is the differential diagnosis of chest pain for central chest pain the causes are cardiac aortic esophageal pulmonary embolus mediastinal anxiety or emotion among the cardiac causes the causes are myocardial ischemia which is called angina myocardial infarction myocarditis pericarditis mitral valve prolapse syndrome among the aortic cause aortic dissection aortic aneurysm among the esophageal cause esophagitis esophageal spasm mallory weiss syndrome esophageal perforation which is called bore heaps syndrome pulmonary embolus mediastinal causes include malignancy and anxiety or emotion among the peripheral cause lungs pleura musculoskeletal and neurological causes are in, important among the lungs or pleural cause pulmonary infarct pneumonia pneumothorax malignancy tuberculosis connective tissue disorders among the musculoskeletal cause osteoarthritis rib fracture or injury acute vertebral fracture costochondritis tilt syndrome intercostal muscle injury epidemic myalgia born home disease among the neurological causes prolapsed intervertebral disc herpes zoster thoracic outlet syndrome now the presentation chest pain is clearly a subjective phenomenon and may be described by patients in a variety of different ways whether the patient describes pain discomfort or pressure in the chest there are some key features that must be elicited from the history site and radiation pain secondary to myocardial ischemia is typically located in the center of the chest it may radiate to the neck jaw and upper or even lower arms occasionally it may be experienced only at the sites of radiation or in the back the pain of myocarditis or pericarditis is characteristically felt retro sternally to the left of the sternum or in the left or right shoulder the severe pain of aortic dissection is typically central with radiation through to the back central chest pain may also occur with tumors affecting the mediastinum esophageal disease or disease of the thoracic aorta pain situated over the left anterior chest and radiating laterally is unlikely to be due to cardiac ischemia and may have many causes including pleural or lung disorders musculoskeletal problems or anxiety rarely sharp left sided chest pain that is suggestive of a musculoskeletal problem may be a feature of mitral valve prolapse characteristics pleurisy a sharp or catching chest pain aggravated by deep breathing or coughing is indicative of respiratory pathology particularly pulmonary infection or infarction however the pain associated with myocarditis or pericarditis is often also described as sharp and may catch during inspiration coughing or lying flat it typically varies in intensity with movement and the phase of respiration 
A malignant tumor invading the chest wall or ribs can cause gnawing continuous local pain. The pain of myocardial ischemia is typically dull, constricting, choking or heavy and is usually described as squeezing, crushing, burning or aching. Patients often emphasize that it is a discomfort rather than a pain. Angina occurs during, not after exertion and is promptly relieved in less than 5 minutes by rest. It may also be precipitated or exacerbated by emotion but tends to occur more readily during exertion. After a large meal or in a cold wind. In crescendo or unstable angina, similar pain may be precipitated by minimal exertion or at rest. The increase in venous return or preload induced by lying down may also be sufficient to provoke pain in vulnerable patients, which is called decubitus angina. Patients with reversible airways obstruction such as asthma may also describe exertional chest tightness that is relieved by rest. This may be difficult to distinguish from myocardial ischemia. Bronchospasm may be associated with wheeze, atopy and cough. Musculoskeletal chest pain is variable in sight and intensity but does not usually fall into any of the patterns described above. The pain may vary with posture or movement of the upper body or to be associated with a specific movement, bending, stretching, turning. Many minor soft tissue injuries are related to everyday activities such as driving, manual work and sport. Now onset, the pain associated with myocardial infarction typically takes several minutes or even longer to develop to its maximal intensity. Similarly, angina builds up gradually in proportion to the intensity of exertion. Pain that occurs after rather than during Exertion is usually musculoskeletal or psychological in origin. The pain of aortic dissection, severe and tearing, massive pulmonary embolism or pneumothorax is usually very sudden in onset. Other causes of chest pain tend to develop more gradually over hours or even days. Now, associated features, the pain of MI, massive pulmonary embolism or aortic dissection is often accompanied by autonomic disturbance including sweating, nausea and vomiting. Some patients describe a feeling of impending death, referred to as anger enemy. Breathlessness due to pulmonary congestion arising from transient ischemic left ventricular dysfunction is often a prominent feature of myocardial ischemia. Breathlessness may also accompany any of the respiratory causes of chest pain and can be associated with cough, wheeze or other respiratory symptoms. Patients with myocarditis or pericarditis may describe a prodromal viral illness. Gastrointestinal disorders such as gastroesophageal reflux or peptic ulceration may present with chest pain that is hard to distinguish from myocardial ischemia. It may even be precipitated by exercise and be, re be relieved by nitrates. However, it is usually possible to elicit a history relating chest pain to supine posture or eating, drinking or esophageal reflux. The pain of gastroesophageal reflux often radiates to the interscapular region and dysphagia may be present. 
severe chest pain arising after retching or vomiting or following esophageal instrumentation should raise the possibility of esophageal perforation. Here is the identifying ischemic cardiac pain, the balance of evidence. Ischemic cardiac chest pain, location is central diffuse, radiation jaw, neck, shoulder, arm, occasionally back, character is tight, squeezing, choking, Pre precipitation, precipitated by exertion and or emotion, relieving factors, rest, quick response to nitrates. Associated features, breathlessness. Non-cardiac chest pain, location peripheral or localized, radiation other or no radiation, character sharp, stabbing, catching, precipitation, spontaneous, not related to exertion, provoked by posture, respiration or palpation, relieving factors, not relieved by rest, slow or no response to nitrates. Associated features includes respiratory, gastrointestinal, locomotor or psychological. Anxiety induced chest pain may be associated with a breathlessness without hypoxemia. Throat tightness, perioral tingling and other evidence of emotional distress. It is important to remember, however, the chest pain itself can be an extremely frightening experience and so psychological and organic features often coexist. Anxiety may amplify the effects of organic disease and a confusing clinical picture may result. A detailed and clear history is key to narrowing the differential diagnosis of chest pain. Figure 10.1 shows how certain features of the history, particularly when combined, can tip the balance of evidence towards or away from ischemic cardiac chest pain. Now, clinical assessment. Cardiorespiratory examination may detect clinical signs that help guide ongoing investigation. Patients with a history compatible with myocardial ischemia should have a 12-lead ECG performed while clinical examination proceeds. Ongoing chest pain with clinical features of shock or pulmonary edema or ECG evidence of ventricular arrhythmia or complete heart block should prompt urgent cardiology review and referral to a higher level of care. Chest pain that is accompanied by clinical evidence of increased intracardiac pressure, especially raised jugular venous pressure, increases the likelihood of myocardial ischemia or massive pulmonary embolism. The legs should be examined for clinical evidence of deep vein thrombosis. A large pneumothorax should be evident on clinical examination with absent breath sound and a hyper-resonant percussion note on the affected side. Other unilateral chest signs such as bronchial breathing or crackles are most likely to indicate a respiratory tract infection and a chest x-ray should be expedited. Pericarditis may be accompanied by a pericardial friction rub. In aortic dissection, syncope or neurological deficit may occur. Examination may reveal asymmetrical pulses, features of undiagnosed Marfan syndrome or a new early diastolic murmur representing aortic regurgitation. Any disease process involving the pleura may restrict rib movement and a pleural rub may be audible on the affected Side. Local tenderness of the chest wall is likely to indicate musculoskeletal pain but can also be found in pulmonary infarction. 
Subdiaphragmatic inflammatory pathologies such as a liver abscess, cholecystitis, or ascending cholangitis can mimic pneumonia by causing fever, pleuritic chest pain, and a small sympathetic pleural effusion, usually on the right. Likewise, acute pancreatitis can present with thoracic symptoms, and an amylase or lipase level should be requested where appropriate. It is imperative that the abdomen is examined routinely in all patients presenting with pleuritic chest pain. Now initial investigations, chest x-ray, ECG and biomarkers. Example troponin D dimer play a pivotal role in the evaluation of chest pain. However, indiscriminate ordering of such investigations may result in diagnostic confusion and over-investigation. The choice of investigations is intimately linked to the history and examination findings. A chest x-ray and 12-lead ECG should be performed in the vast majority of patients presenting to hospital with chest pain. Pregnancy is not a contraindication to chest x-ray. But particular consideration should be given to whether the additional diagnostic information justifies breast irradiation. The chest x-ray may confirm the suspected diagnosis, particularly in the case of pneumonia. Small pneumothoraces are easily missed, as are refractures or small metastatic deposits and all should be considered individually during chest x-ray review. A widened mediastinum suggests acute aortic dissection, but a normal chest x-ray does not exclude the diagnosis. Provided it has more than one hour since the onset of pain, chest x-ray in esophageal rupture may reveal subcutaneous emphysema, pneumomediastinum, or a pleural effusion. Patients with a history compatible with myocardial ischemia require an urgent 12-lead ECG. Acute chest pain with ECG changes indicating a ST segment elevation myocardial infarction suggest that the patient is likely to benefit from immediate reperfusion therapy. Specific information relating to cocaine or amphetamine use should be sought particularly in younger patients. In the context of a compatible history, an ECG showing ischemic changes that do not meet STMI criteria should prompt regular repeat ECGs and the treatment for non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction or unstable angina. Measurement of serum troponin concentration on admission is often helpful in cases where there is diagnostic doubt. But a negative result should always prompt a repeat sample 6 to 12 hours after maximal pain. Acute coronary syndrome may be diagnosed with confidence in patients with a convincing history of ischemic pain and either ECG evidence of ischemia or an elevated serum troponin. If an elevated serum troponin is found in a patient who has an atypical history or is at low risk of ischemic heart disease, then alternative causes of raised troponin should be considered. Further management of acute coronary syndrome is discussed on page 498. In the absence of convincing ECG evidence of myocardial ischemia, other life-threatening causes of chest pain such as aortic dissection, massive pulmonary embolism, and esophageal rupture should be considered. Suspicion of aortic dissection, background of hypertension, trauma, pregnancy, or previous aortic surgery should prompt urgent thoracic computed tomography or transesophageal echocardiography. 
An ECG in the context of messy pulmonary embolism most commonly reveals only a sinus tachycardia but may show new right axis deviation, right bundle branch block or a dominant R wave in V1. The classical finding of S1, Q3, T3, a deep S wave in lead 1 with a Q wave and T wave inversion in lead 3 is rare. If massive pulmonary embolism is suspected and the patient is hemodynamically unstable, a transthoracic echocardiogram to seek evidence of right heart strain and exclude alternative diagnosis such as tamponade is extremely useful. If the patient is deemed to be at low risk of pulmonary embolism, a D-dimer test can be informative as a negative result effectively excludes the diagnosis. The D-dimer test should be performed only if there is clinical suspicion of pulmonary embolism, as false positive results can lead to unnecessary investigations. If the D-dimer is positive, there is high clinical suspicion or there is other convincing evidence of pulmonary embolism such as features of right heart strain on the ECG, prompt imaging should be arranged. Causes of elevated serum troponin other than acute coronary syndrome. There are some cardiorespiratory causes and non-cardiorespiratory causes. Among the cardiorespiratory causes, the causes are pulmonary embolism, acute pulmonary edema, tachyarrhythmias, myocarditis, myopericarditis, aortic dissection, cardiac trauma, cardiac surgery or ablation. Among the non-cardiorespiratory causes, prolonged hypotension, severe sepsis, severe burns, stroke, subarachnoid hemorrhage and stage renal failure are the causes.